Hey, what's up guys, Sam here. You know, I could do this all video, I could hide the wrinkles in my shirt, but that's not very authentic. I'm gonna give you guys the straight juice today from the apple fruit themselves. Whoa, this is pretty wild. Some crazy news over the past 24 hours, not only on the time of flight sensor for the iPhone 12 and about the crazy fast processor coming. Apple, we knew was working on an iPhone 9. The iOS 14 code confirmed that along with everybody else. Apparently they're also working on an iPhone 9 plus, a bigger 5.5 inch version. On top of that, Apple themselves on their website has leaked the iPad Pro. Four new models are on the way, two and 11 inch, two and 12.9 inch. And I want to tell you all about that upgrade. Drop a like if you're looking forward to the video it does seriously help me out and hit subscribe so you guys all stay up to date on the latest apple news i don't know about you guys but as i have barely left my house over the past week the days they are all running together i'm not exactly sure where i am anymore but i do know that new products from apple are supposed to be right around the corner this comes courtesy of mac rumors and another different little birdie that i've been hearing some stuff from as well last march you probably remember that prior to apple's official march event they unveiled a bunch of new products through press releases it was one a day for three or four days and it was really exciting because every day we'd wake up at about 7.30 a.m. and get a new product. This year, obviously, the global occurrence has made that a bit more challenging as so many people are not working at Apple stores, all of them are closed outside of China, and even factories are just beginning to ramp up again. That being said, it's only Tuesday of this week and there is some indication that new products could still be on the way. I mean, Monday, for example, we did get the official unveiling of Powerbeats 4, which are under 50 bucks, have 15 hours of battery life, red, white and black colorways. They look pretty sweet if you want some AirPod style, but still with a wire connected. Today so far though, we haven't seen anything. And I've of course update you guys if that changes, but we haven't seen any products yet. But from what I've been hearing, there's supposed to be products coming this week. Obviously these plans are highly in flux and I wish I could be like, oh yeah, 100% on this source, but things are, you know, sort of up in the air and I don't want to give you guys any false information about something. So I don't know if it's coming, it could be, it could not be. It seems like the original tentative plan was for this week. Now as we're waiting on these products to release, we got some other good stuff on the iPhone 12. A report saying that the iPhone A14 processor, said to be in the iPhone 12 lineup, is going to exceed at three gigahertz for the first time. But not just on the iPhone, we're talking about in all mobile phones ever created. Oh, I hit my little whiteboard. I do that all the time. Here's a little secret so it reflects light off my face. Pretty much every other company for the past few years now has been playing catch up with Apple. It just seems like they're so far ahead and they're making an even bigger jump with the single core score on the iPhone 12 series reportedly going up about 50%. That's a big number. Um, obviously, we don't know what that actually translates to because this is just simply on paper. I could be like, yo guys, the multi-core score went up 4,500% year over year and it doesn't really mean anything until we see it in action, but it's still promising. And it it's a good sign that Apple is still able to achieve record growth year over year in their mobile processing power. Following that, our best buds over at 9to5Mac are still on uh, the, the iOS 14 code bender they've been on for a couple weeks now. They are continuing to release more info and today's snapshot was about the infrared sensor on the back of the upcoming iPhone 12 Pros. Initially, we thought this could be for all the iPhone 12 models, but based on what they're finding inside of iOS 14, it's only gonna be reserved for two models and as this is definitely a more premium feature. It's going to basically allow you to help map the world around you better in 3D and then use it in the new Apple augmented reality app that they're working on that is also leaked in iOS 14. For example, the measure app right now is just making a lot of guesses about what it's seen. And I've noticed it can be grossly inaccurate at times. With this new time of flight sensor, it is going to help you measure things way more accurately than before. Maybe to the point where you actually don't need a tape measure or a ruler. This though, it's just for the 12 Pros because Apple could add this to all phones, but then what's the differentiation? between the two. I mean, if there's anything to be a premium feature year over year, it's going to be this new infrared sensor on the back that just scans the environment around you. I'm very interested to see how this turns out because I've been personally skeptical of Apple's AR approach in the past. I have not found it beneficial in pretty much any way, but they're said to be using this exact same sensor on the back of the new iPad Pro, and it's apparently pretty stunning. So uh, more on the iPad Pro in just a second, but it turns out Apple's not done with the iPhone for 2020. It's not just the iPhone 12 series and 12 Pro series. They've got Got another one, the iPhone 9, but hey, we knew about that. But what about the iPhone 9 Plus? They're popping these iPhones out like kids at this point, dude. I mean, I know they've all been quarantined at Apple, but woof, they are not slowing down at all. 9 to 5 Mac, again, our pals over there, they have shared exclusive details for the first time ever officially 
from the Apple iOS 14 code. Now we had heard a slight indication in the past that Apple could be considering or mulling a larger plus sized iPhone 9. Again, this is the iPhone SE 2 that we're referencing and it's gonna look pretty much exactly like this. The official renders we've seen of the iPhone 9 courtesy of OnLeaks from a while back. Yet another iPhone for 2020 straight up confirmed because of this. It's not even a leak or a rumor at this point. 9 to 5 Mac telling us it has a 5.5 inch LCD screen. It's unclear whether it will have one or two cameras although both the 7 Plus and 8 Plus did have dual camera setups, but at this being such a low cost, I don't know if Apple's gonna do that. A13 processor on the inside, Touch ID instead of Face ID, and the ability to scan NFC tags in the background, which the original iPhone 8 actually didn't have. Just think of these as updated versions of the iPhone 8. Apple's been really struggling in recent history in the lower end iPhone market, and as the iPhone 8 lineup is three years old at this point, pretty much, they wanna find a way to still capture that lower market share, but have updated processors, because A13 is happening here, it's gonna make these insanely quick. It's probably gonna be around 500 bucks for the plus size model if the lower end version is 400. That's generally how Apple separated the normal and plus size versions in the past. The only other tidbit we've learned is that on the iPhone 9, you will gain the dual stereo recording mode. So audio, for me when I tested it from like the iPhone 10 to the 10s, it got basically twice as loud and I, it sounded amazing. The iPhone 10s has stereo audio. So if you can hear the difference, this is the audio coming directly from the iPhone 10 from 2017. This is my voice speaking. Uh, it sounds good until you hear this. Now, again, it's not like studio quality. I don't want you to expect that features coming to the iPhone 9. I think it's safe to guess it will also be coming to the iPhone 9 Plus as well. No word on when the 9 Plus is coming as the 9 is said to still be right around the corner. On the complete flip of that, something we still have pretty much no idea about is the next generation version of non-AirPods Pro. So Digitimes has been essentially the only publication talking about new AirPods and it's still unclear what exactly they are. Of course, we know they're a new pair of completely wireless headphones from Apple that are going to look somewhat like either AirPods Normal or AirPods Pro, but they continue to refer to them as AirPods Pro Lite or in another statement, entry level version of AirPods Pro, which what would that even mean? There's been speculation about just dropping the noise cancellation feature of AirPods Pro to come out with a cheaper version of entry level AirPods Pro, but to me that doesn't make any sense because there are a lot of people that AirPods Pro don't work for, myself included, just like normal AirPods didn't work for a lot of people, so Apple made the in-ear version of AirPods Pro to fit the whole market. For sure, Apple's working on another cheaper or lower end pair of AirPods because they are so incredibly popular, but the details are still really muddy, like three or four reports in. We're just still hearing low end AirPods Pro. Apple though not saving leaks just for their iPhone models, but also on the iPad Pro as well. Again, something imminently expected as Apple on their own website publicly for just a little bit, according to iPhone in Canada, published in their Chinese iPad user guide four new iPhone models. A2228 and A2231 were both 11 inch iPad Pro models when Wi-Fi went cellular. Same story is true for the 12.9 inch A2229 and A2233. These are similar models to what was confirmed in the iOS 14 code and it really feels like these are supposed to come out really soon. And according to source CoinX over on Twitter who has an essentially perfect track record, someone says, should I buy the new iPad Pro? No, don't buy the iPad Pro, please, I'm begging you. Doesn't think that you should buy this, well, because it's just around the corner. We're not sure who this person is, uh, it could be anybody, from Tim Cook to the person who cleans the toilets at Apple. CoinX, this is your big test. There's a lot of concerns about Apple's supply chain in uh, lieu of recent events, so is it actually coming? I, I really hope you're right on this one, and I will certainly keep you all updated as further developments happen. It was also registered, the iPad Pro series in the Eurasian Economic Commission that always previews when new products are right around the corner, and it, it, I mean, I'm serious, guys. Like, it feels like this is right around the corner. It's like we can taste it. I can smell the new 3D time of flight camera on the back and I can see it. We saw these renders for on leaks a while back. I mean, it's it's really here. It's been revealed forever. It's just, you know, when is it gonna actually be in our hands physically? And finally, if you're in the market to buy a new MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, I would not recommend doing that just yet, especially if you're not a fan of the current keyboard situation. The only Mac keyboard that has scissor mechanisms back in it again is the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Everything else is still resting on the atrocious butterfly mechanisms. Well, according to Apple analyst Minchiko with an insanely good tracker, 
record, Apple is going to update all the models in the second quarter of this year, both the new 14 inch MacBook Pro that we heard about a little while back and the MacBook Air lineup. So just stay put a little bit longer, incredibly good news because the scissor keyboard is, you know, it's just better in every way. You can't go back to butterfly after you touch it. Man, oh man, it's like we're, we're on the edge of glory here, you know, with all these new products, but uh, I'll keep you updated again. I'm supposed to see some stuff this week. I'll let you know if that happens and uh, we'll stay tuned for more. Uh, drop a like if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more. Cheers to the iPhone 9 Plus and I'll catch all of you in my next video.